Hello everybody and welcome to Dynamic GT League's G-Spot um, this week where we've got a few things to look at. Joining me on the G-Spot is Raymond. How are you, Ray? Oh, it's been naughty naughty. Oh, well, oh, wouldn't you like to know? Um, I'm going to actually give you the answer for the um, uh, the joke I made on the race video, what would now be yesterday. Um, the... Uh, the woman who left me for a Chinese guy. The woman who taught me how to uh, trace out the alphabet with my tongue. What? You what? Do you have you forgotten already? No, I know about the alphabet. I, I missed the end. Yeah. Well, I'm going to give you the answer to it. The woman that taught me how to trace out the alphabet with my tongue. Yeah. Yeah. She left me for a Chinese guy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, have you ever seen the Chinese alphabet? No. Ch Chinese letters? No. No? With all those lines and shapes and wiggles and things? Oh Imagine God. learning how to trace that with your tongue. So you get it now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. Right, okay. Um apologies for the dodgy oh, joke. Do they not read up and down as well? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, it goes too far. Oh well well, yeah. Um, <laughs> it quickly comes back up. Um uh, okay, so um right, this week's G spot. Um there is a couple of things we're gonna look at from um the uh, race two. Um I think there's one thing we're going to look at from race three, this race this week, um, and then we're going to have a bit of a look at the fuzz uh, for next week. So um, I reckon we just sort of kick... Actually, for anyone that doesn't really know what this is, the G-spot is basically is where we can talk about weird things that might happen in the races, um, and we can show and explain what we think about them um, as commentators rather than as admins, although at times we may say... Well, as a steward, I think this, or as a uh, an admin, this is how I would think about that. But for the most part, take it as we're viewing it as commentators. Um, and so if people have questions that they want to know about or things they want to know about, whether it be um, should you be allowed to cross a pit lane white line, for example, um, anything like that, we can talk about it. Or like we had the question the other week of... Um, uh, is there a problem with a, a driver who's a lap down unlapping themselves and then having a crash in front of the leaders? So different things like that. So feel free to put your questions in um, either to the page um, or on the comments. Um, okay, so let's uh, get cracking on this and we'll take a look at uh, the first one. So G1 uh, is SGP start uh, from Tokyo. I've got my audio on, but anyway, we'll keep going. So he does a jump start, as we'll see. He moves forward way earlier than anybody else and then doesn't move again. Um, but what I want to point out here is he is on full throttle trying to move, but his handbrake is on. Right? Now, someone may say, well, take your handbrake off. Well, it's not that easy. Um, and we'll come on to that a little bit more in a moment. What I do want to mention is that SGP obviously did the false start there. Um, he ended up with a five-second penalty where it holds him. Um, it caused collisions, so he ended up letting everybody through. Art Pal behind him was nothing Art Pal could do to avoid the back of SGP. And Mitch, who was behind Art Pal, also there was nothing that Mitch could do here. Um, I mean, yeah, absolutely nowhere Mitch could go. And the car behind Mitch is the same situation. There's nothing SRI could do. There is nowhere SRI could have gone there to avoid a collision. And same for Gary, who was behind. 
Um, and there's no way that Gary would be able to see what was happening up ahead. Um, so I would lay no blame on anybody else there other than uh, SGP. And fair play to him. He did um, give the positions back to everybody. Um, but it does kind of pose the question of so what should a driver do in that situation which is a tricky one because normally a jump start is fractionally before the lights go out your car moves forward you get the time penalty and your car will probably keep rolling forward or if you do sort of hit the brakes to stop moving it's not long until you actually get going again and cars have a bit more time to react to you but because SGP jump started so soon, it was massively early. I believe he stopped the car, which is what anybody would do in that scenario. You go, oh shit, like you know it's proper early. But unfortunately for him, once he has stopped the car and it's imposing the penalty on him, it's automatically putting the handbrake on for him. There's nothing he could do at that point to get the car moving again. Um, which is where it potentially kind of brings a bit of a grey area, Ray, because really we'd like you to be able to get moving again. Because if he'd have been able to move again and still get his penalty, there may have been the possibility that the cars could have avoided him. Yeah, and uh, there'd be uh, communication for some of the drivers that are within the chat when we're in the chat that he could say look I'm pulling to the left avoid the left side yeah. but yeah um, yeah, uh, yeah I was <laughs> I was interesting though yeah. but uh, you, you can see what happens when somebody does a jump star and I don't think uh, well that's the worst <laughs> that can happen when somebody does a jump yeah. start but um uh, to be fair, there's not been many of them that have caused any issues. I think this that's th this is the only one. one. I think, yeah, yeah, um, and because it was so early as well. I mean, it, yeah. for me, I, I, I'm going to ask this question because I and think plus we don't have traction control on these cars as well. So yeah, yeah. So jump start and he puts a foot down to get out of the way. Is he going to spin it or well? I don't think he could because obviously he, once the car starts moving, it's going to limit his speed. So he wouldn't be. So I was going to say it would potentially pose the question of, excuse me, rather than doing the natural thing of, oh shit, and hitting the brakes and stopping, would they be better off? not touching the brakes because the game will slow them down but perhaps keep them rolling forward while they're getting their penalty um because from and the reason i asked that is because it looks like if you do it the brakes um the the game then locks your handbrake on and you can't move the only reason sgp got going again was because he was hit into movement um and I'm, it just reminded me, I'm sure it happened to Steve F1 uh, once as well, He where he did a bit of a jump start, it wasn't as bad as this one, but he did a jump start, hit the brakes, and then it wouldn't let him move again um, until the penalty was served. So should a driver yeah. can just try and not stop and keep rolling forward? Uh, it's going to be a hard one on that scenario because... Or at Tokyo, everything's closed in, so would yeah, SGP rolling, trying to get to the edge of the track and saying everybody have jump start uh, go to the right. But then would that cause a threat to other all the drivers on the right? Because everybody oh, on the yeah, left's going to the right. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's a good point. Yeah. But no, I mean not only that. So if it happened at Bath first. If he kept rolling forward, what happens if he hits the car in front of him and forces them into a jump start? Yeah. I think it's going to be whatever track you're on, you've got to try and figure out what would be your best scenario. And uh, I don't know, did SGP get scared and just slam on the brakes? Like, oh no, I didn't mean to move. And then 
didn't realise the game was going to lock his, lock his uh, ha- handbrake on. At that point, there's nothing SGP can do. Oh, no. Yeah, he'd done the jump start, but yeah. as soon as the game takes over his car, there's nothing he can do. There's... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so and he done he done a fair thing by oh, yeah. going to the back of the pack, uh, uh, back of the grid, yeah, and then continuing from there is like, look, yeah, I've I've kind of made uh, he's not made a farce. The game made a farce of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You could say he did make a farce because he jump started, but. Yeah. He didn't know the game was going to put his brakes out, yeah. Right. Because obviously, so, in a in a real life situation, yes, it'd it get out brakes, of- but then it'd get going again when the lights go green. Um, um, I mean, I, I think if I had a bit of a cynical, not a cynical head on, um, it's actually probably my most thoughtful at the moment is having now experienced it twice. And I, was, I mean, twice after the amount of races we've done is not many at all. Um, but I think it That's may it. be one of those situations where, I mean, as soon as SGP jump started, he did say, oh, shit, I've jump started. So anybody that could hear him heard. So maybe it's a situation where drivers that are behind a car that has jump started maybe just have to be that little more aware that if a car ahead of them jump starts, they may not be able to move off the line. Now, I'm not saying that it's then on them to avoid the car. I'm just saying that... So, like, um, Art Powell uh, here at the back of SGP, I don't think there's any way that I would say, yeah, the car behind should know that that was going to happen and should move out of the way. Never will I say that, unless... The gap between them is so huge that you could go, look, you had time to realise he wasn't moving. But that's not the case here. You don't have that time to realise they're not moving. But having the knowledge that, okay, if someone jump starts and stops, they can't move again. And that's why we do the G-spot. Because that's something that a lot of people might not have known. And people, some people may have thought, why didn't he just go again? Well, he couldn't. He was flat out on the throttle, but the game wouldn't let him move because it was making him serve that penalty. Now, if his car had continued rolling, it would still have made him serve the penalty, but his car would have been rolling. But again, as I said, that comes with its own dangers. So, yeah, definitely can't put any fault on SGP other than don't be a dick and jump start. Press the right button next time. Um, Because that's what happened. He pressed the wrong button. Um. Because he'd been yeah. playing GT Seven too much, um, and uh, yeah, so that's that's yeah. You know, you know how F One watches our uh, our videos and then mm-hmm. takes wee bits and puts it on the F One. Yeah. You, you reckon uh, uh, Gran Turismo uh, uh, coders? Uh, I reckon they watch our videos too, so this is to use. Why not, if somebody jump starts, lock their brakes, when the light goes green, just give them half power, and that way they keep moving and they can keep going and say, oh, I'm pulling to the left, instead of just holding in there. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and it, just to touch on it as well, for anyone that says, well, it, it should make them, it could ghost them. Could well, ghost them, but... it, it could, but that's that's if the car is there. It's, I mean, to be honest, I'm I'm against ghosting. Um, that's why we don't have the flags and penalties on because yeah. we try and get as little as ghosting yeah. as possible. I mean, I'd much rather it be a situation of okay, there's a car there. I know there's a car there. If I drive straight at it, I'm going to hit it. Not oh, there's a car there. It's ghosted. If I keep driving at it, I'm going to go through it and then get into it and go, ah, oh, shit, he's unghosted. And we've had that happen. Um, I mean, we do see ghosted cars on occasion still, um, but that tends to be in situations where uh, like a car has hit, her, hit a wall like very hard. Um, like, you know, um, um, Mitch's bomb hole. 
like when you hit one of the walls there and come to a dead stop, you go from like one fifty to zero, and it it tends it happens to ghost on occasion. Okay, I still uh, would prefer that it didn't, but it does. I think if a dead ghost you a bit so much carnage there. Mm, abs- absolutely, because <laughs> um, everybody prays and says, "Don't un- ghost, don't un- ghost." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but, but it's just the way the line goes. Like yeah. when you hit that wall and you start getting going, you're on the wall line mm-hmm. where everybody's coming round, and it's hard to get a sharp turn over to the other side of the track. So yeah. that's why we pray that <laughs> you don't unghost there. Uh, uh, it's not nothing of ah, uh, he's ghosted. I just want to go through him. Yeah, uh, it's more of we can't. <laughs> the line's going that way. There's nowhere I can go. If, you yeah, and ghost. If you and ghost, yeah, there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, I mean, it's a bit like we actually saw it last week, didn't we? Uh, with Hay. Oh, I can't remember what corner it was. Oh, yeah, the um, the first chicane where he hit the wall, ended up spinning, and there was nothing Fluffy could do. He was just driving through the corner, and there's a ghosted car spinning in front of him. But as he sort of gets there, it on ghosts, and yeah, and but then. It is what it is. Um, okay, we'll get on to the next one in a second, but I just want to ask this question and to, to the viewers out there as well. What starts with the letter E ends, for it. ends with the letter E, but I'm only sorry, has... Hat. What? I missed half of that because okay. you kind of cut out. My... All right, it's your, it's your ears. Um, what starts with the letter E, ends with the letter E, and only has one letter in it. I? No. That's a good guess, though. That's a good guess. I'll give you that. I was thinking, ah, oh, but- is this E-Y-E? Oh, oh the letter I. Uh, no, it's a good try, but no. I'll let you ponder that one. Should we move on to the next one? Um, the next G-spot, and we'll uh, let that question ponder for a while as uh, Ray traces it out with his Chinese alphabet. Um, okay, so on to the next one then, which is G2, which is Dave the Harp and Fluffy. Now, this was a situation that we heard a disagreement uh, during the race, so I wanted to just have a look, and having looked at it, I wanted to watch the footage and show the G-spot. So this is kind of like spectator view. Fluffy's just got ahead of Dave. Dave's uh, having a bit of a look up the inside. Don't really see much in it there, um, which... If you were watching the footage, you wouldn't think anything about it at all. But let's go on board a little bit, shall we? So Fluffy gets a run on Dave Hart. He's uh, used the slipstream. They're giving each other plenty of space. And then Fluffy just gets ahead at this point. And this is kind of a key point. So here, Fluffy's thinking, right, I'm ahead now. And all of a sudden, Dave reappears as Fluffy's turned into the corner and gets ahead. Now, some may think, well, that's a bit of a bit of a dive bomb from Dave. Well, let's have a look. So Fluffy's coming past and just gets ahead, but Dave's still within potentially fair range, slightly different breaking points, and Dave's able to get up the inside. Now some people may say, well, it's a bit of a dive bomb, but as I say, Fluffy's just overtaken Dave, so he's still within fair range that he could potentially still have a look into this corner. So as we're getting closer now, I would say, for me, it is a situation where Fluffy should be aware or could be aware that Dave may still try and make the corner. On the flip side, however, Dave also needs to be aware that because he was behind Fluffy, although within fair range, that there is a possibility that someone in Fluffy's position could turn in um, to the corner, not realising that someone like Dave has managed to get up the inside because of it happening that right at the end of the braking zone. So although Dave is in fair range, he also has to be aware that there's a chance that Fluffy might not be a, might not have the chance to see that he's got back up the inside there. And Dave has tried to take the corner um, using as much road as possible on the inside. But I think it's a situation where Fluffy may have just been caught out. And this view gives a good sense of it there where you see that Fluffy's gone for the corner thinking that Dave's behind him. And I don't think Fluffy realised that Dave was... Yes, he was behind him at one point, 
But then at that last key moment, Dave was able to get himself there. So the question... Okay, I'm going to pose the question to you. As a commentator, though, not as a steward or an admin, um, was Dave in that position fairly, do you reckon? Yeah, he was in that position fairly. I don't know why Fluffy left the door open. Mm. Well, maybe he wanted to invite Dave in for a beer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but... Uh... There was a point that uh, Fluffy could have um, moved across and uh, defended that corner, but yeah, Dave, fair range. Uh, Dave had uh, every right to go for that move. There was space there. There was a, more, more than a car width there. Mm-hmm. Fluffy Turning in, maybe I don't think Dave was that close. Uh... Something I've just realised that I didn't do, and the only reason I haven't provided this uh, video clip is because I, I haven't been at home for the last couple of days. Um, so I was quite rushed just doing some of this stuff. I didn't record it from the view that I think Fluffy uses, which if Fluffy uses the view in um, the front bumper view where you have the virtual mirror... I pretty much 100% guarantee it would have looked like Dave was behind Fluffy, which, okay, there was, there is a moment where Dave is behind Fluffy, but Dave is still within that, is within that range where he could potentially go for the overtake and it'd be a fair move. But I reckon on Fluffy's view, if he'd have looked in the mirror at the point that he was ahead of Dave, it would have looked like Dave was way back. And that potentially would have added to Fluffy thinking, Dave's too far back here. And Fluffy, I'm, I've kind of put myself in Fluffy's seat. Um, it's a bit sticky and a bit sweaty, and like uh, I'm a bit big for it. But as I've talked before, as you're approaching a corner and you're in a battle, there comes a point where you get that one last look. Um, and for Fluffy, if his one last look was seeing Dave appearing to be too far behind to have a go, I could understand him thinking that he's ahead because he has that last look, thinks Dave's too far back, focuses on where he's going, turns into the corner. Holy shit, Dave's there. The mind instantly goes, well, Dave was too far back. He's dive bombing there. But that, again, is why we do the G-spot so that we can show here that there may have been that occur for Fluffy but Dave was fairly in that position and it wasn't a dive bomb he has fairly made the move up the inside and I think had space been left between each car I think they'd have got around the corner fine now that's not to say that I'm putting blame on Fluffy right because it could sound like that, because I could easily go, well, look, Fluffy's just turned in on Dave, and part of the discussion that we heard at the time, Ray, was um, Dave thinking that Fluffy just turned in on him. But what Dave might not realise is that, from Fluffy's perspective, Dave wasn't there. So it's not that Fluffy's turned in on him, Fluffy's gone for the corner thinking that Dave's behind him. Yeah, that's why I was talking about uh, in a commentary view and not a, a steward or admin view. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, but it, it is an interesting one, though, because it's it, it, it's those little moments that can brew. Yeah, and it can catch people out as well. Like, yeah. Uh, the, not uh, uh, every. Everybody will be in that moment um, at some point. If they've not been there, they will be in there. There's something going to happen. But I think most of our drivers have been in that moment. Yeah. And uh, they know it could, it could get... Well, you know what? Uh, it could be accidental, but uh, that's why we say always go look back at the footage and see. Yeah, it's definitely worth going back and looking at the footage. But again, I mean, someone could go back and look at that footage and go, oh, well, Fluffy's just turned in. But that's where you have to go, okay, well, what view does he use? What did he see? What would he have seen? And I wish I'd got that footage um, because, I, like I say, I might actually edit it afterwards now um, and and add it in. You know what? If I remember, I will do that. 
right? Um, I probably won't remember because last week I didn't even remember to audio record the qualifying result on the race video. Um, but if I remember, I will actually put the footage in to see if I'm right with my 100% guarantee it looked like Dave was way back. <laughs> Um, but that comes from experience of looking at many situations when people use that view. But something that we both heard recently, Ray, that someone um, said on an interview somewhere, which was, I think, perfectly put, and as we should say it as well, really, is if you're all on your own on the track and you're driving around and then you turn into a corner and all of a sudden there's a car there and you're, holy shit, where did you come from? Okay, fair enough. You kind of understand you get caught by surprise. Sometimes that can happen. But if you're in a battle with someone and you're side by side with someone for a while and you're overtaking them or they're overtaking you, you you clearly have been no taking notice of each other. You're in the battle. Then if you're within that range, when you get near the corners you kind of have to expect that the car could be there. And I think that's kind of the situation here, that yes, Fluffy made the overtake. Yes, Fluffy just got ahead, but they are still in the battle and they are still fairly in the battle. So Fluffy or anybody in Fluffy's seat would be better off thinking, well, we've just battled down the straight and know that he was there he could possibly still be up me inside or have a look. Let's give the room. And then what won't happen is what we've got here where Fluffy th- thought he was ahead, goes for the corner, but Dave's there fairly. And then there's a, a bit of a discussion. Um, but yeah. Anything else to add on that one? No. Driver's don't get heated in the moment and whatnot, but yep. to be honest... Uh... As a commentator, uh, <laughs> the door should have been closed early on. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, well, okay, I'm going to play devil's advocate, advocate here. Maybe Fluffy didn't think he was far enough ahead leading up to the corner to pull across. Maybe he thought that was too dangerous. I don't know. Um, so why are you talking? <laughs> uh, uh, good point. Yeah. Uh, um, okay, go back. Uh, we'll go back to hell. <laughs> right, yeah, next one. <laughs> right. Um, okay, just a reminder. What starts with the letter E ends with the letter E and only has one letter in it. Um, okay, on to e? a what? E. Yeah. Starts with E, ends with E, and only has one letter in it. Um, I was thinking a letter in between, but yeah. Okay. Uh, right, let's go. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, okay, so the next one then, and interestingly. This next one, G3, is, again, with Dave the Harp and Fluffy from this week's race. Um, now, we're going to look again from the spectator view, and bear in mind everything we've just sort of talked about. So, Harp held Dave the Harp side by side through the first corner. Uh, Fluffy's got a little bit of a run. It's kind of going three wide a little bit, a little bit bumpy. Um, still a little bit bumpy, and some may say well, this looks a bit messy, but then Dave doesn't quite make the corner um, and then off they go the hill this is where Dave actually goes on to make the move on Gary am I actually uh, no I don't show it okay so let's take a look at it then from Art Pal Art Pal gets on the curb a little bit gets a bit of a wobble touches Dave those two are slow through the corner Fluffy's got a run on them and when we do look at it from Fluffy's view you'll see that there was the opportunity for him to have a look but then that opportunity closed with but so from Art Pal's view here, not a lot Art Pal can do. Wow, there goes Dave. Um, and Art Pal's done well to avoid Dave. I think Dave just breaks it too late there. Okay, so let's now go on board with Dave the Harp, which this is the view I think he uses. Art Pal's had his little wobble. Hasn't really compromised Dave too much, but now with Art Pal having Fluffy up his inside, Art Pal can't move over. Dave may not realise that Fluffy was up along Art Pal a little bit. Um, so also 
can't find moving over but couldn't gets a bit late on the brakes and uh, yeah doesn't quite make the corner but this is the interesting bit now David to the wall now at first look you could go what if he's just put David the wall there and this is the thing the reason I'm looking at this by the way that's those two going slow there's that space that Fluffy had that opportunity but there comes a point where I think Fluffy realised that he might not need to back out of this and rightly so I'll talk about that a little bit more um, I think Art Power was still trying to give Fluffy room there and Dave again got his break in there. but this is the key point and again you go oh no, Fluffy's just put Dave in the wall there but okay let's look at this is the space there for Fluffy to go into? Well, these two on the right are slow through the corner. Fluffy's got the better run. And the space is there, but then it does quickly close as Art Pal has tried to give Dave the heart the room. Now there's nothing Art Pal can do. He can't go left, he can't go right. He got squeezed. Fluffy realised, OK, I'll go back out. Um, Dave the heart still trying to move over a bit. Guess he's breaking one as we see. But now Fluffy is ahead of Dave. So Fluffy thinks, I'm already past Dave, but Fluffy's in the wrong gear. He's slow. He drops it down to second to get going again. So, yes, he was ahead of Dave, but thinks he's still ahead of Dave, but his speed's died. That's meant Dave's managed to get back up alongside him. Fluffy doesn't know, and that's where the collisions happen. So people who are hearing the audio on this will hear it better. So just at that moment, Dave catches Fluffy rapidly. But it's because Fluffy's car isn't moving forward very fast. See, that corner's a second gear corner. Fluffy went into it in third, and when it comes to accelerating out of the corner, it's going 84, 85, 86. He realises it, drops it to second, but at that moment is when Dave has now suddenly got up alongside. I don't think Fluffy had any idea that Dave had got there. Because if I think about it from Fluffy's perspective, Fluffy's thinking, I've just passed Dave, so he's I know he's behind me. And then his focus is, hang on, I'm, I'm, why am I not going? Oh, shit, wrong gear. Bosh, knock it down. The incident's already happened now. He, he probably don't know. Or even if he does know, he might not know exactly what's happened. And at that point, I mean, I want to mention that the reason I looked at this particular incident is because, um, again... It was between Dave and Fluffy. There was a bit, sort of, perhaps, uh, confusion from last week. We don't want anything brewing over, and it's good to be able to show these things um, because Fluffy, seeing this, will either go, you know what, I had no idea that that bit fucking happened. Now I understand why Dave was a bit annoyed. Um, although Dave was asking the question, Fluffy, what are you doing? But because Dave's from Liverpool, it come across uh, as it does. It's like Fluffy's stole his uh, cereal and his milk, or even Crawler <laughs> just stole the the power lead for his PlayStation. Obviously, like good German. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, now, interestingly, I don't think you'd seen that, Ray. No, I, I don't see that. I, I heard about it on your street, but mm. uh, I don't know what happened. After the corner, I thought mm -hmm. the hop went wide, and then, uh, to be honest, I actually thought Fluffy made a wee bit of a late move to the left that mm -hmm. uh, it hit Dave the hop. But uh, now seeing that, that it was a gear change that mm -hmm. caused it, that brings a different perspective. It's like uh, car catching. Another car at the wrong moment in the line, would I say? And yeah. Fluff, like Fluffy wouldn't have known. He would, I went right, Dave's went wide and then went, oh no, I'm in the wrong gear, kicked it down, and before he knows it, Dave the hops up beside him. And, it's already happened. By the, time yeah. he's, by the time he's kicked it down the gear, it's, it's happened. Um, yeah. And that is why, two things, that is why we always say, try and keep calm if you can, guys. Um, and have a look at what happened. Again, it would be easy for someone to initially watch the footage like we did on those first few clips. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if you did it, Ray, because you didn't know that that there was an, sort of that incident there with the wall. That you'd look at it, and other people probably looking at it when we're showing it, we're going, 
he's just stuffed them in the wall. Okay, it helped with me saying, oh, look, Fluffy's stuffed them in the wall. But that's what it looks like. It looks like Fluffy's gone, well, I don't give a fuck. I'm just going to stuff you in the wall. Fuck you. I'm not going to leave you the room. But when you look at it and go, well, okay, well, what did happen? And when you realise the gear, the speed, and the timing of that, it's just, that's one of those situations that is sheer bad luck. Um, now, if it was reported, I mean, it may be reported, I don't know yet, um, but if it was reported, would it be a penalty? I've no idea. I'd probably have to look at it in more detail. But, yeah, it's just, it, it's, it is one of those where that's just bad shit happening at an unfortunate situation. Well, think of this. Dave the Harp's going at 102 mile an hour compared to Fluffy going at 94 mile an hour. Mm-hmm. At that moment in time, yeah, and that's after Fluffy has seen Dave go wide. Um, he's overtaken him, downshifted. Yeah, he downshifts at ninety-four mile an hour, mm-hmm. where Dave's going a hundred and two. Yeah, and Dave, that's he, because Dave stayed in second gear. And yeah, and so that gap's closing very quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. Now, I can fully understand why Dave, in the heat of the moment, at that moment, would have been annoyed. Because, I, again, I would pretty much guarantee from his view, it would have looked like Fluffy has just moved over and stuffed him in the wall. But hopefully, Dave, seeing this, will be able to go, oh, okay, it's not like he's done anything malicious, or it's not like he's done anything stupid. Because he hasn't. Some people might say, well, he should have been in the right gear. Well, yeah, he should. But sometimes when you're in the heat of battle, mistakes happen. And that's what that's what this is. Fluffy's made a genuine mistake. He's, I mean, when we look at it, he's come round turn one with two cars battling in front of him. Now, I will say as well, the little bit of contact between Art Pal and Dave the Harp, there's nothing in that. Art Pal is trying to give, it's a good example actually, Art Pal is trying to give Dave the Harp all the space in the world, so much so that he's clipped the apex curb, which has bounced him a little bit across the road, which has given Dave the Harp a tiny little touch. Now, there's nothing in that, because Art Pal is doing everything he can to give Dave the Harp space at the apex. Unfortunately, the curb's made him wobble, a little bit of contact. Nothing in that. But because they've side by side through that first corner, they are both slower. It's what happens. Fluffy, I think, is perfectly well within his rights to realise he's got the better exit, sees the space, has a look. Now, it's one of those, yes, he's got the right, but at the same time, it comes at a risk. That risk being those two cars that were slower than him were side by side and still are side by side. And one of them might not be able to see that they're now three wide. So, Dave the Harp trying to make sure he stays on the road, Art Pal trying to make sure he's still giving Dave the Harp space. So, Art Pal moves across a bit to give Dave the space, but now Fluffy's there. So, Art Pal's like, oh shit, sorry, Fluffy. Um, Right. And then moves to the right a bit, and Dave the Harp probably doesn't know that Fluffy's there at all. Um, And Dave's then probably thinking, why is Art Pal squeezing me, uh, coming back over to me? It's a kind of no-win situation, but Fluffy, I think, had the the right, the fair right, to have a look. But when it got to the point of, oh, shit, we're three wide and the space was disappearing for Fluffy, I think Fluffy did the right thing by going, you know, I'm, I'm backing out of this. Because Fluffy was the one attempting the overtake, um in a situation where he was the one taking the risk. I don't know if I've explained that as well as I could have done. Um, but yeah, Well, the two were battling, he had a better run. So he's uh, try, he's taking the risk of going up the left-hand side, whether the, the, depending on how much space uh, Art Pal and Dave the Harp gave each other, so he's taking the risk of going into that space It's there, yeah. Um, they especially if he doesn't know what's happening with the two cars ahead, he done well. Yeah, he's seen right. I've got nowhere to go. I'm backing out. Mm. He done well for that. Yeah, I mean, he 
he, well, it sounds a bit big headed, but he did what I would do, um, which is, yeah, attempt it, but I'm the one that's taking that risk in that scenario. Obviously, if there was only one car next to him, then that one car's got to leave him room. But as we saw from the different views, Art Pal could go no further left. I mean, he was trying to give Dave room, but then realised there's a car there, and he can't not go... It's not like he can just go, oh, sorry, Fluffy, you're there. Okay, I'll move over to the right. Well, you can't do that because Dave's there. But And that's where it would be so easy for any person on that inside line to think, well, why is... Why is he coming back over here? Yeah. Well, it's because he's got a car next to him and he needs to make sure. So it's a perfect example, I think, with Art Pile of trying to do the right thing 100%, giving space at the apex of the corner, but unfortunately gets a wobble, touches Dave, not a lot in it, but doing the right thing, but results in a little bit of contact. Let's put it this way. If he wasn't giving him space, if he, if Art Pal was not giving Dave the Arp space on the exit of the corner, Dave would have been in the gravel. And that's why we have the, the rule of always give space, as long as the person's yeah. there fairly. Because um, they can have that battle through the corner. Like we saw with Dave the Harp and SGP, they went three, four corners side by side. When you, when you give the space, that's what you get. You get a fantastic battle. Um uh, so yeah so there's not a lot in in that bit down the main straight so actually i think it was very good driving all round. the bit after i fully understand why dave the art may have been frustrated but i would hope that he's be able to watch this and go oh shit yeah okay i i, I realize what happened now um it's not like anyone's done anything malicious or anything like that um and for fluffy yeah that's just unlucky mate it's unlucky Right, um, Ray not adding anything there. Uh, what I will say is, though, uh, it is the uh, epitome again of, yeah, try and keep you cool, guys, because what you think happened may not be exactly what happened. Um, okay, we've only got, really got one more thing to sort of look at and mention, Ray, and that is uh, about the fuzz on the next uh, track, unless you want to uh, add anything to uh, what we just looked at there. Uh, it's one of the scenarios, isn't it? Uh, you've got three wide and a narrow track, and the both guys at each side don't know what, don't really know what's happening. Uh, one could uh, think, "Why, why are you coming towards me? I've got no more room." And the other one be going. Why are you coming back towards me? I've got no more room. Mm -hmm. So the guy in the middle is kind of stuck in a situation that he's trying to manage as best as he can. Yeah. And then the the corner, a light break from Dave the Harp, put him a wee bit wide, and Fluffy with his uh, wrong gear, mm -hmm. uh, the closing speed was that much that I don't think Fluffy kind of realised what had happened and maybe I thought I did the Harps tried to come right back at me and uh, not realised and then went oh I'm in the wrong gear damn <laughs> yeah I mean obviously we don't know exactly what Dave was thinking or Fluffy yeah. was thinking but what we can yeah. do is we can look at what happened and yeah. look at the facts, and yeah, the fact was, yeah, Fluffy was Absolutely. in the wrong gear, and the speed differences at that point created the incident. I mean, uh, it's interesting it's as well. Not a, well, it's not a full driver error, but it was a part of a driver error. Yeah, like yeah. being in the wrong gear, but yeah, you, you're so worked up by uh, trying to drive by trying to race in that. Sometimes you forget what gear you're in. Sometimes oh, yeah. you can go oh, into yeah. first. First gear, and you end up spinning the back end. You go, Why did that happen? Oh, yeah, right. I'm in first gear, I'm, yeah, I'm in the wrong gear, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, so it's easy. I mean, to can't with yeah. the race, it's just going back, looking over the footage, and yeah, just uh, having that wee, that wee moment. Yeah, I mean, the other thing I wish, I mean, um. I mean, I, I I didn't look too much at whether Dave did break late, but what I did notice as well is that. Dave upshifts to fourth very, very late. He actually upshifts to fourth 
probably at the point where he would have wanted to have been on the brakes, really. And I think for Dave, that fraction of a second of he's gone up to fourth and then he's, he's gone on the brakes instead of staying in, fi- in third. That's what led him to um, end up going deep at the corner. So it's just an unfortunate Sorry. situation that's happened. But what I will say is... So he could have been in there wrong rhythm at the time. Like he's got his rhythm going of right up shift to fourth and then then I hit the brakes and then I sh- downshift. Yeah. Where he's in that battle with cars that By the time he's still he's up to fourth, it's a bit uh, further down the road. Yeah, and he's he just the rhythms just went completely out the window and, and that happens to everybody. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's possible as well that, I mean, I, I don't know what gear Fluffy was doing though, that corner in normally. Um, I mean, he, I mean, for all we know, Fluffy may have been going down that straight in third gear, doing one downshift to second up the, around the corner up the hill. But on this occasion, he might have actually been in fourth gear, done the one downshift and then go, why am I not moving? Oh, shit. And realised. Because it's slipstream and yeah, that. Because he was in the slipstream, he'd have been going, essentially going fast. There's so many different factors. But what I will yeah. say is, this is again why we do, we're why we're doing this G spot is so that we can show these things. But also, interestingly, obviously there was the um, G two from this video where obviously it was between Dave and Fluffy, and obviously they had a bit of a discussion during the race on that. And it is, we've experienced it before. It can happen where people have a minor thing; they could have a couple of minor things, and it can build and it can build and it can build. And again, a reason for doing the G-spot is so that both Fluffy and Dave would be able to look at this footage and go, all right, okay, yeah, there's there's no in it. And I understand now what happened. And I'll try and keep calmer if things happen um, and stuff like that. Because what we, obviously we don't want is for... Um, okay, so let's say, for example, and I'm not saying that this is happening, but what we wouldn't want is for someone to feel like... Um, Okay, it, we wouldn't want someone like David Harp to think, well, Fluffy keeps bloody crashing in, he keeps hitting me. He doesn't, he doesn't care, he just keeps turning and keeps hitting me. Keeps, and there's always the potential that someone could react. So and that's what even, we... Hang on, I need to finish this point because it's important. And that is the point that should not happen no matter what happens on a racetrack in real life or in the sim world, you should not retaliate. Because as soon as you retaliate, it doesn't matter what's happened before, you've retaliated. And that's going to be punished more. Right, sorry to cut you off, but I needed to get that bit out. Go on. Um, you forgot uh, now, haven't you? Uh, oh, no, I've not forgotten. Uh, even though most of our UK base. There's still language barriers there, so... Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> what, what are you saying? <laughs> and so, d- d- even though we've raced for years. how many years all together, uh, there's still times when we don't know if somebody's been really angry, yeah. peed off, or they're just trying to say, look, I'm still here, I'm still here. And they're in the heat the moment, but yeah. we're still learning, even though we've raced. How, how, how long has this game been out? Really Six years? Time. Five years? But Six it's, years? it's like we said before, I mean, <laughs> there are times, I mean, we like to take the piss out of each other. It's, it's part of what we do. Uh, we also try and be there for each other. But sometimes people are not in the mood to receive a joke, um, like Ray every week on fucking commentary. Um but yes, yeah, no, so I like to talk about it, make me laugh. Uh, all right, um, but uh, yeah, so sometimes you could say something to someone and they'd laugh about it, another time they might not. So, I mean, for example, Will Smith and his wife, Chris I Rock, know, makes, not going there. well, I'm not gonna say, going Chris there. Rock made that joke, Will Smith laughed, then saw that his wife was annoyed, then lost his shit. And yeah. that's the thing. So one point, someone might find something funny. At another point, they don't find it funny. And that that can happen and that can change. But as we've known from experience, and this is, I mean, this is, it's good experience um, in, in life in general, really, that if your initial reaction is, 
aggression or seen as or heard as aggressive, you're only going to get aggressive back. So it's a little bit like, let's say, for example, um, you're driving along, you pull up to a set of traffic lights, you stop, and all of a sudden you get rammed up the arse. And you're like, what the fuck? You get out of the car, you're screaming, you're shouting, you're effing and blinding, you're getting, you know, going over to the other car, you're raging. But then you find out the person's had a heart attack and they've died. And that's why they've rammed you up the arse. Well, aren't you going to feel a con? They've not hit you on purpose. They've not made a mistake and hit you. They've lost their life. And you're you're raging because they've, they've damaged your car. Oh, boo-hoo. At least you're still alive. Very deep message there. Actually, I think that's the deepest I've been on the G. Sp- Hang on. That's a fucking joke. That's a funny joke, yeah. Fuck, you know, spend weeks writing jokes and then I make one up and fucking without even trying. <laughs> it's funny. Um, but, but it, I mean, it is a deep, it is a deep point, but it, it's a fair point. And I've been I've been that rage monster before. It's why I don't do. It's why I didn't go down the competitive racing route because I became that rage monster, and I didn't like it. I don't like. I race better when I'm when I'm calmer and I'm relaxed and I'm having fun, and it doesn't matter. I just I, yeah. But again, that's why we do this this G spot so that when there are things that happen that people get annoyed and stressed about, um, or don't fully understand, we're at least able to show it. What I will say is, Twilight, you'll realise we haven't got your pit entry on this week's G spot. We'll get it for next week. We will get it for next week. I'm just giving him a bit of time to be able to deal with the fact that it will be on next week's G spot because we have no idea what happened. I haven't even looked at it, but. Yeah, um, and the reason I haven't done it for this week is because I know Twilight was frustrated with how that race ended up for him. And I'm not going to poke the bear. He d- he doesn't need that. Um, And it's one of those situations where normally it would be a joke, but it may not be received as a joke at this time. So Twilight... That's how, how, how he sees it. Exactly. Which is why I'm now giving Twilight a fair warning in seven days' time, it will be on the G-spot. Um, so, yeah, the last thing for us to have a look then, because we've gone on for nearly an hour now, which is not unusual. Oh, yeah, no, we've been here since 8 o'clock. It's 20 to bloody 11. 11. I know, I know. <laughs> um, okay, there's only one more thing then, and that is the fuzz. Um, so we'll have a quick look at this. I have put some images on the screen. So, yeah, the, the fuzz for the next race... Um, at uh, Yamagiwa 2 and it is in this direction only that we're uh, that we're using it obviously the fuzz has been something that has uh, been discussed a lot um, in this championship the previous championship at other circuits We've not discussed it hugely at this circuit and I just want to point out that the sign across the road the Gran Turismo the real driving simulator sign is the, where the fuzz zone starts now, this image is going to be on the screen for a little while, Ray. Um, there is no moving pictures or any other images. Um, but some people might say, well, you don't need the fuzz here. Well, what we've experienced with this track is that people tend to tr- like making an overtaking point of the following chicane. The problem is, once you go side by side through this next chicane, 95% of the time it's going to end badly and when it ends badly it's going to affect everybody behind you um it's a set of corners that it is not ideal to try going side by side down that braking zone and into those corners because especially with these cars and this is a key factor of it especially with these cars these cars don't like curbs too much Now, you can go through those corners using the curbs on your own and you can get through it pretty quick. But when you're offline and having to give space to somebody next to you, a bit like we mentioned with Art Pal, you're going to hit a curb in such a way that you are not going to be in control of your car and it will end up in a crash. You will end up 
causing a collision or you'll end up going so slow that you're going to get hit up the rear so the fuzz will be used at this track at that location with a clear sign across the road of where the fuzz zone starts which should give drivers plenty of time to slot into their positions without losing too much speed um, because the fuzz zone starts considerably earlier than it did at Tokyo um, but yeah you've got more uh, more time before you need to break so yeah you can see where you are just maybe lift off make sure you're in yeah. and behind and hit your brakes and then yeah. lift off tuck in trying trying try and get a better line to get your better exit because uh, I reckon on the exit, I uh, should should be able to see a few overtakes coming. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, if it's... not, then into the right. It's a right hand. Yeah, it. it's the yeah. nearly flat out right hand. This is the other thing as well. That's a section of track. I mean, I for years have always said there is no such thing as a um, a corner that you can't go side by side in. You can go side by side in every corner on every racetrack. It's just a question of how fast you do it. But one of the things I like about the fuzz at this location is when it comes to overtaking, there is actually zero point in attempting to overtake into that chicane. Because what's going to happen? Let's say you go side by side through the chicane. You actually make the move into the corners. Well, on the exit of the corner, you've now just given the car you overtook the complete nearly flat-out section of the racetrack to come and overtake you, which they're probably going to do into the next corner. So by attempting an overtake into that chicane, you're basically gifting the other person the opportunity to overtake you in the next corner. So why not pressure the car ahead, see if they make a mistake, and then overtake them into the next corner anyway, and you'll be happy as Larry. So it's about aiding the drivers in overtaking techniques and about car positioning, not just, oh, we don't want people to overtake here because it'll end up in a crash. It, there's actually a theory behind it, which is by implementing... Oh, in a crash. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. By implementing the fuzz, it helps teach the drivers, okay, although I'm close and I'm kind of in fair range, I don't really want to be here. Okay, I'll back out. Um, okay, we'll do it. And as much as people didn't, may not have liked the fuzz at Tokyo it did what it was meant to do and it worked and it made for a better race video don't get me wrong, we like to see crashes but what we don't want to be seeing is cars just all strewn over the road um, because somebody ended up on a curb that they couldn't control their car on yeah. right, right, now I've uh, been making Ray uh, wait ages he's had his new wheel turn up today and uh, he's been playing started getting golds on gt7 licenses um so uh yeah i've uh, purposely uh, made the commentary and uh, video long today uh oh, so <laughs> i haven't to be honest i've just waffled um but uh, exactly <laughs> yeah, yeah. um okay a couple of things to uh actually finish off with um uh, my nieces um, have started to discover boys. Well, that'll teach yeah. them for digging up the patio. You what? It'll teach them for digging up the patio. You'll get that eventually. Um, oh, they'll start discovering boys. So yeah. Okay. Teaching who to dig up the patio then, or you? They'll teach them. I've said nothing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and to answer the question, right, what starts with E, ends with E, and only has one letter in it? Mm. Envelope. Are oh, you prick? <laughs> you know you're going to use that, though. You know it. 
<laughs> I tell you what, though, your guess with I was pretty good because if even if it was E Y E, it would have been with one letter in it. Start E at the front, E at the end, Y in the middle. Fair enough. That's what. Well. Oh, yeah. Oh, or even yeah. if you took it the way that I did, which you meant the letter I, um, which sounds like the word I, but it could have been the letter I. Oh. But no, it's an envelope. Yeah. With a first class stamp on it. Right. Thank you very much for listening, folks. Uh, <laughs> Ray's going to disappear and probably never do commentary again. Um, yeah, so have a good one. Thanks for watching. Hit like, subscribe. You know what to do. Check out the merch. And uh, yeah, have a good one. And we'll see you all again soon on another G-Spot. Ta-ta.